Okay guys, I bet you thought I'd never get to this, but finally it's time for Ask Me Anything. Yeah, I know, I asked for this months ago, probably at least two months ago, but finally I'm gonna answer you guys' questions today. So I'm actually going to divide this video into two segments. The first one is going to be Weight Watchers and Weight Related, and then the second segment is gonna be all about Eddie and our family and just random, odd questions that you guys wanted to know. So we're going to start today with weight questions and Weight Watchers. So first of all, Melinda Norman says, I would love to hear more about your actual weight loss journey before making Lifetime. Did you go over your points like you sometimes do now? She's being very generous by saying sometimes. How long was your journey? How and when did you decide on your goal weight? So first of all, I started Weight Watchers in May of 2015 and my highest weight was 172. The reason I started Weight Watchers is because my pregnancy weight, my highest pregnancy weight was 175. So I was very, very close to that and that was kind of a little eye-opener wake-up call, I guess. I started Weight Watchers the very week after I returned from a cruise where I ate everything I could and it was delicious and fun. But that was in May 2015. It took me until September 2016 to hit lifetime. So it took me a long time. I lost the majority of my weight um, from May 2015 until about September 2015. And then, or maybe it was like, it was fall 2015 sometime. And then I think I just got comfortable. I kind of stalled for a while. I bounced up and down a lot. I was probably drinking more wine, going out to eat more. Um, so then in spring of 2016, I decided to get serious again and I tried really hard to knuckle down and just lose that last little bit. And in the meantime though, guys, I never stopped going to Weight Watchers. I never stopped paying for my e-tools. I never stopped doing Weight Watchers. I kept doing Weight Watchers, but um, I was just kind of stuck in a rut. I guess not serious maybe or not ready to lose that last little bit. So did you go over your points like you sometimes do now? Yes, I did. However, I think I went, I had less days of going over my points then while I was losing weight than I do now. So for example, now I definitely go over my points on the weekends and then there are probably two or three days, maybe two days right now, during the week that I go over my points. When I was losing weight and especially in the beginning, I would say I went over my points maybe twice, probably just, I mean twice a week and probably just on the weekend because we did still go out to eat. I did still enjoy wine um, several days out of the week. So the way I eat now is probably fairly close to the way I eat then, except that I was a little more strict then. Um, how long was my journey? So it took about a year and a half, a year and a half for me to lose about 38 pounds. How and when did you decide on your goal weight? So I actually really wanted to hit 140 pounds and I had struggled for a few months with being around 145, 146, 147. My leader was the one who actually said, what is the deal with 140? It's just a number. You look good now, you've lost the majority of your weight, you're healthy. Um, she said it's just a number. So I kind of took a look at that and I thought, you know what, if I choose 145, it doesn't mean I have to stay at 145 for the rest of my life, but it does mean that I will get to pay less eventually, like free. So I increased my goal weight to 145, and then I hit that goal weight just a couple weeks after that. Did maintenance for six weeks, paying. And then after that, I've been free ever since. So I did choose a slightly higher goal weight than what I initially wanted. And then since I chose that goal weight, I've actually lost about 10 more pounds over the course of a year. So, and I haven't had to pay that whole year. I really, really like having a 10-ish pound buffer because I don't want to have to pay. <laughs> I know Eddie doesn't want me to have to pay. So, um, at this point, I probably wouldn't have to because now I'm a receptionist, but being 
working for Weight Watchers also kind of presents some motivation because now I have to stay at my goal weight to be an employee, so that's good too. So Mary Lapine says, I'm new to your channel. I've been watching from I've been watching from the current uploads to the older ones, so I haven't come to the one that you shared your weight loss journey. So that's pretty much it in a nutshell. If you guys have additional questions about my journey in general and what I did along the way, um, feel free to ask below because I know everybody has different specific questions, um, but that's it in brief. Gail H says, how much have you lost and how long did it take? So my Weight Watchers name tag says I've lost 40 pounds. And I did for like 10 minutes. <laughs> now I stayed at like, my 40 pound mark would be 132 and I have weighed in at 131 and 132 a couple times, but for the most part, I average around 133 to 135. So I would say in general, I've lost about 38 pounds. Um, 40 sounds good though. So, and it took me a year and a half. Renee Kent says, how do you keep yourself motivated with exercise? I feel like I really don't have a lot of motivation for exercise. I just have to do it because if I don't, I feel bloated and gross and disgusting. I can go probably about two or three days without exercising and then I have to just do a good sweaty run because I start to feel gross and bloated. So I know that running helps, not only does it help keep the bloating down because my body does not let go of water easily. So the running helps because I sweat a lot. Eddie will tell you that because I stink. And also if I don't run for two or three days, then I get like just mental, I start to feel down and depressed and so I just feel better if I work out at least every two or three days. So there's no, I guess that is the motivation. I just want to feel better and feel normal. As far as like goals, like running goals and exercise goal motivation, um, I don't know where the drive comes from, but I always, I've always wanted to be faster. I've always wanted to go further. I want to do better at yoga. I don't know, I get burned out and then I have no motivation and I have no desire to improve. But for the most part, I'm always setting new goals, trying to improve. I think I'm just such a black and white person that I'm super competitive with myself and just always trying to do better. So, I don't know if you call that motivation, but that's something. Okay, Vicki Millsop, do you use your fit points? Oh, yes I do. and then some. So Vicki, um, you, if you've been watching over the last couple months since you asked the question, you probably noticed that I do use all my fit points, I do use all my weeklies, and then sometimes I am still negative. I try not to be for the most part, but there, there are weeks, like the week I was on vacation in Idaho, I think I came back at negative 120 something. <laughs> so um, I do use all my fit points. My goal is to use all my weeklies. I have no problem with doing that and use the fit points I need but not be negative at the end of the week. So I do get um, I do get a pretty good amount of fit points over the week. I would say probably on a good week, 100. On a not so good week, I don't know, maybe 60 to 75. So I get quite a few fit points over the course of the week. I seriously should have plenty of points and no reason to be negative, so that's my goal. But yes, I do use my fit points. And actually, when I was in the losing process, I did use my fit points also. I used my weeklies and I would use my fit points, but I wasn't really negative as much. Charity says, I'm interested to know how you overcame your eating disorder. So that was a really, really long process charity because I have had an eating disorder since I was 16 so way over half of my life it came and went a lot 
and during the times that it was bad, I would either take anti-depression medication or I would see a therapist or a counselor, but I really I didn't like doing that at all. I'd rather just take a pill. But it came and went for years and years, and when I was faced with very stressful situations, it would get very, very bad. So the worst was probably seven years ago. That's when I was hospitalized for this. And I was in the hospital for actually, I went, um, I think I went two times for about a week to a week and a half each time. And then I went to a specific eating disorder clinic and I was there for three months. So. I actually left against medical advice. Um, I thought I was better. I left after three months and then I think I was out for two weeks and I took myself back and then I lasted a week and I left again against medical advice. So it's just, it was a long haul and during um, that process of actually being in the clinic, there was a lot of therapy. And even before I went in the clinic, there was a lot of therapy, a lot. And that's probably in the long run what helped me the most, even though I was so against therapy. And also probably at that point, I was so bad and so dangerous to my own health that I probably needed to be in that clinic um, in order to figure out how to eat again, basically. So once I was released from the clinic, I continued to go to therapy and it still didn't, it still didn't go away. It just does not magically go away. It still took, I want to say another three to six months of therapy, maybe, and then probably another one to two years after that for me to feel like it was gone. Today, I, there were so many times that I was like, and even in the eating disorder community, there are a lot of people who will agree that it never goes away, that it will just never go away. It will always be there in the back of your mind. So for years, I thought that was going to be me and I would always struggle with it. It would always be there, but I would say probably the last maybe four years, maybe about four years now, um, I will confidently say that I no longer have an eating disorder. I say that, but I know there will always be the tendency and probably always something in my personality, in my brain, in the back of my mind where I, if something snaps, I could probably go back to it. But I just, I choose not to at this point in my life because it's not, it's so not worth it. I don't have the time. I don't want to do that to myself. I don't want to do that to the people around me. It's not worth it. So I don't know if that's the answer you were looking for. I don't know specifically if there was any one thing that helped me overcome it, but I can thankfully say right now that yes, I have overcome my eating disorder and it took years, years. So Jennifer Gammon, do you have a before and after photo? So this is my last question for the Weight Watchers and Weight Loss segment. So I will end this with your before and after photo. Thanks you guys for all your questions. If you have additional questions that I did not answer here, feel free to post below and I will share what I can, um, which is pretty much anything. I'm a pretty open person and any, uh, any assistance, any tips, tricks, advice I can give you, I will gladly do that. So here's my before and after picture and look out for segment two coming up shortly.